Hello everyone. So in this video, we're just going to do something very quickly before we move on to something a little bit more complex with components. But I want to focus a little bit more on attribute binding in Angular 2. And I thought I'd do that by building a navigation on the site. So at the moment, you can see down here, we've got our go to teams and we've got the go to players link. But really, it's not that efficient. Like normally you'll have a kind of navigation bar across the top here. So that's what I want to focus on now. I want to actually build a navigation bar here and look at a, a few little concepts um, as we do that. So let's get started. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to stop my Angular CLI and we're going to build ourselves a new component. So we're going to call it main navigation, obviously. So we're going to, and you might say, well, why are we building a component and we're not just adding markup to the site? Well, I'll, it'll come. It'll become very clear to you very quickly when um, we're talking about choosing which route is currently highlighted, right? So, you know, when you're on the teams page, oh, teams page, you want the teams item to be highlighted. When you're on the players page, you want the players, um, you want the players link to be highlighted. And if you're on the home page, you want the home link to be highlighted, and so on and so forth. Now, if you think of it from a um, just writing markup in a page, you can't really do that. You know, you either got to do it server side, or you got to do what I'm doing right now, and that's building an Angular component for it. So let's do this. So Angular ng g uh, components, and we're just going to call it main navigation, and enter. So this will take a few seconds again. And guys, I still haven't resolved the warning up the top there. So again, if anybody can work out what I've done wrong there, I'd love to know. But at this stage, I, I'm just ignoring it and assuming it's a webpack problem. Uh, what have we got here? Oh, it's picked up my component for my last run. Okay, I'll just go yes. Um, Yes, override. Yes, yes. Okay, so it's it's a it's overwritten a few files. That's okay. I obviously didn't remove it from the last time I ran this, but that's all right. So let's go over to what we've done. First, I'm going to write. I'm going to run ng serve, and then move over. So now you'll see we have a main navigation folder here under app. I'm just going to close some of these down. We open it up, we've got HTML, you know, it's the same stuff you always have with the component. Inside of here, it's, you know, the typical that it generates, is the ng uh, generate function has. First thing I'm gonna work on here though, is I'm gonna go straight into the markup. And I'm gonna use a bootstrap navbar. So, let's do this. So we'll go nav class equals navbar. Now I could paste this, but I like to show people that, you know, I like, I like to do it this way just because it shows that we're doing something deliberate. So BG inverse, so that's background inverse, so I'll make it black. Um, so it'll be black with white, back with white text. And then we're gonna have a UL in here. And the other thing I want to mention too, guys, that this is not something related to um, Angular 2 at all, but I'm, I really am not a fan of classes in my code. And you might say, oh, why is that? Well, very simple. It's very ugly to look at your markup when you have classes and attributes all over the place. So I like to try and create my CSS with things like child selectors and, and um, descendant selectors and things like that. And if I need to derive a component, well, I used to do that with an ID of the component or some form of an attribute that would define what the component is so that it would be only unique to that component, which is kind of what Angular 2's tried to achieve with the um, this whole you know attribute classes that they're generating. But anyway, I'll, I'll move on to that when I get there. But I'm really just not a fan of classes in general. I just thought I'd mention that. So, li 
class equals nav item nav dash item and for, for now I'm just going to make this one active but we're going to change this at, in the near future and then under here we're gonna li and we're going to have an anchor tag and inside the anchor tag, we're going to call it nav link, nav link. And instead of using a normal href, we're going to use the router link attribute because I want to be able to point, um, I want to be able to utilize, you know, the routing inside of Angular. And we, we utilize the routing by using router link and not something else. And then we'll type home and then close that off. And now I'm going to do a little bit of duplication, a little bit of copy paste here. So for two more, and we're going to remove the active off the other two, like so. And then we'll come in and we'll make this one players, and this one teams, and we'll make this players and teams, like so. All right? Save that. Um, we're going to come over to the component. I want to clean some of this out because we actually don't need half the stuff here. So we don't need the on init at this point. On init is something I'll explain later when we get to fetching stuff from services. But at this stage, we're not focusing on services. And we don't need anything else. This can be an empty class. And save that. Now. We can go, uh, what we also need to do now is we need to reference it because at the moment you'll see we have nothing over here to reference it. So we're going to go into the app component.ts file because remember we created that template. And just after the header here, I'm going to add the was it, app dash main dash navigation element. I think that's the name of the selector navigation like so I'll just quickly double check that yep so save and now we should get our nav bar and there it is so we've got our home which goes to the players with our players we've got the teams but it looks great and everything and we're kind of there but we have one problem. And that problem is, look at this. We've got home highlighted, but we're on the Teams page. So you think, okay, how are we going to get around this? How are we going to handle this? Well, we know for a fact that the class on the, on the active link has a class name of active. All right? Makes sense. Not that hard to understand. So what we need to do is we need to bind based on the route, all right, so based on where we are, we need to apply the active class as part of the class attribute, or active um, class name as part of the class attribute based on where we are, all right? So how do we do that? Well, first thing we need to do is we need to go to our component and we need to include a service, all right? that allows us to read what the current route is. So what is that called? Well, in Angular, it's referred to as the router. So we're gonna import that. We're gonna import a router from Angular. And yes, you guessed it, router, right? And we need to inject this. Now, I haven't mentioned too much about routing yet. In fact, I mentioned very little about it. So we come in, we create a constructor, right? We're gonna have a private router, I'm oh, sorry, private uh, router, uh, it's a type of router, like so. In fact, I'm gonna put this on one line like that. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to expose a method here. You might say, oh, why method? Well, I'll show you in a minute. So we're going to have a method called isActive. And what we're going to do is we're going to pass in a URL, which is of type string. And then 
this is basically going to return a boolean. So true or false, essentially. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna somehow determine if this if this URL is active or not. So what we need to do as part of the bulk here is we need to go return whether the URL is equal to right equal to. In fact, we probably should go to lower just to be safe. To lower case just to be safe is equal to the router. Uh, sorry, this dot underscore router. And you must, like, in, whenever you include something inside of the actual class, you must always refer to it as this. This dot router dot URL dot to lowercase. So this would be, so if you are being case insensitive, this is what you do. In fact, you know what? I'm not going to be case insensitive here. I'm going to be case I'm uh, sorry, case, I'm not going to be case sensitive here. I'm going to be case insensitive. So I'm just going to write it like that. Right, so basically, if this is equal to this, then we know it's an active link. So how do we utilize this in our markup? Well, functions are the same as properties. This is a public function we can call, right? Same as we did with the on-click event in the previous example. We exposed a method and we're able to call a method. We put, you know, if you go back and have a look, where are we? Players, player list component. We had a set selected player method. And inside of our component, we exposed a method called set selected player. Well, it's no different here. We come in and we go to our HTML. And now what we want to do is this active class, we want to specify that this should exist only when we're active, right? So how do we do that? Well, we use attribute binding and we go class, right? Because we're working with the class attribute. We want to apply the value active, right? So it's like that. And then we go equals is active. And then the, basically the route that we're choosing. So in this case, it's rather link slash so we're gonna pass in a slash here, right? Oh, sorry, I'll put that as single quotes, like so, so we don't get an issue. And then that's, that's it. So now what will happen, without doing the others, I'll do the others in a minute, but what will happen is if we're on the home page, the home thing will be highlighted as active, otherwise it won't be. So let's go have a look at that. So we come back, see we're on the teams. So see here we, we can tell it's no longer active. If we click on players, again, home or players or teams or nothing is active. If I click on home, now you'll see home is highlighted. It's got the active class now set to it, right? So all we need to do now is we need to set it for the other two, which is pretty straightforward. It's the same as doing it up here. We just take this, we copy, we come down to the next nav item, we paste, we change it from slash to slash players. And then once again, we copy, and we paste, and we go to teams, right? And this is a successful way of binding to an attribute in the DOM. This is a, this is a DOM attribute, this is a DOM attribute. This is a value of the DOM attribute. So now if we let it rebuild, we refresh. We're on the home page, home is highlighted. We click on players, we're on the players page, players is highlighted. We click on teams, teams page, teams is highlighted. Back to players, players highlighted. Home, well home has players inbuilt so it's hard to know. So now I'm gonna get rid of these stupid little things at the bottom. So let's just go doing that. Let's go do that. So we go into those two components that had it, which is the playlist component. And we'll remove this, like so. And into the teams section and teams list. And into the team list component. And again, we remove that. Right. No biggie, too easy. And those two things now should be gone. So save, 
Yep, you can see they're gone. And we can just use the nav bar here to navigate between the pages. And that looks a little better. Now the only issue we have at the moment is that we have no, we basically no spacing between the nav bar and the content. So let's just fix that up very quickly. And that's pretty easy. We're gonna go into the main navigation. We're gonna grab the CSS. And what I'm gonna do is on dot nav bar, I'm gonna add a margin top, a uh, margin bottom, sorry, of we'll say two rem. Now I'm not gonna explain what two rem is, but basically it's root m's, which means it's your, it's about two times the size of your default font for your browser. That's what I'm giving you here. So now if I let it go through its wonders, now we've got some spacing in there. So it looks a little better. And that's all I wanted to achieve in this video was basically to set this up and understand a little bit more about attribute, uh, attribute binding. So in the next video, what I might do is I'm going to focus on forms and we'll use the Teams page to basically select something and we'll open up in a form so the data will be automatically updated and we can basically go in and edit it. Or what we might even do here is we might add an edit link on the end here. So when we click the edit link, you will come down to a form and you can edit the data, save it, and that data will be persisted back up here. And what that will teach is that it will teach us two-way binding, which is something called ng model. And I think it's important at this point for you guys to understand what that is, because that's a pretty key component to components. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, component with component. Anyway, I'm going to leave it at this point for this video. So thank you for listening and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.